Now we need to remember the whole purpose of assessment. And that is essentially two main elements. Remember that formative and summative? Formatively, it is around providing feedback to your students. Feedback is one of the most significant aspects of effective learning. Providing students with an understanding of how they're going with their learning and how to improve their learning. So feedback is an essential fundamental aspect of learning and as a result of teaching. And you being able to make effective judgments and assessment of student learning means you can then provide effective feedback. So that's the purpose of, well, that's one purpose of assessment, being able to provide that effective, that, so that effective feedback. It needs to be ongoing. It needs to be individualized and contextualized for your students. It needs to be specific to what they're learning about and what you're teaching them. It needs to be clear and in a language that they can interpret and understand. It needs to be timely so that they can act upon that and use that in the context of what they're learning. Um, it can be collaborative so that the students can work together around their feedback, particularly if it's around group tasks. And it can be delivered in a way that supports students and helps them reflect on their learning in a positive and encouraging way. So that's the purpose of your assessment. So a purpose of your assessment to give that feedback and to engage students and improve their learning. So you should always think about assessment in that frame. Even if it is also a summative assessment, it should also provide opportunities for feedback to your students. Now, the other approach is the thing that all teachers love, is reporting, where you need to make summative judgments on your students and report that to external bodies. In primary school, that's mostly done through report cards. It can also be done, though, for awards and other certification processes. But generally, it is done to parents um, in a formal way through report cards. And report cards involve a whole language of their, of their own. Um, teachers know the language very well. Parents sometimes interpret things in the correct way. Sometimes they don't. But very often report cards are done in a very formal way, particularly in high schools but, and particularly in private schools, where teachers often have very little actual input into the process. They will generally craft the initial report card comments, although increasingly now um, you'll be required to select from banks of comments. So you'll make selections from electronic comment banks and the structure of the report card comments will be very formalized and very antiseptic and um, depersonalized. Now, in some primary schools, particularly in the younger years, there is more freedom for you to be per able to personalize and make your uh, report card comments more explicit to your students and have a more conversational approach with your parents. But in the main, because of all those issues we talked about around accountability and being confronted and being required to defend your reporting um, to protect teachers, it is being very much more formalized and taken away from that personal approach. Now, that does lose a lot. And that's why in some schools, they have still kept a personalized approach, particularly in the younger years, where there's less, um, less frequency of teachers confronting and requiring teachers to defend the reporting process. So there are so those some characteristics of effective reporting. It should be aligned with the curriculum and the assessment tasks. So it shouldn't just be made up and talk about other things. It should be defensible. Um, it should be accurate. It should be individualized. It should be meaningful and in plain English so that parents can understand it, not using teacher code and curriculum code and language that teachers aren't familiar with. And of course, as mentioned before, there are some legal requirements around reporting um, that are in place, uh, particularly around the A to E structure. 
So there are some standards that we utilize in report card comments, um, and there are different standards for prep to year two and from year three to year 10. And so essentially you'll provide a, um, the standard that the students are at, and then just as with crafting um, assessment criteria, you'll do elaborations on those and make modifications based on the, the core standards.